Hello everyone, and today I will show you the easiest way to automate working with tables. Okay, for that uh, we will be using this example, table 1 on testriver.com and samples, which has, as you can see, some rows and columns. We'll create tables 1, 2, 3. And we don't need to generate any tests. Okay, before I jump into that, uh, what I would love to uh, describe uh, is what are the ways to work with the table and uh, how to do it the best way. So how would you express it if you were to do it uh in your test case in english you probably uh, say something like uh, delete this row or delete row containing this this idea what does it mean though is you actually mean to click on this button which is uh, on the right of this id which is a unique id in this table uh, and you also want to click on something in column actions. So there are two ways uh, to do it reliably in, in test trigger. One is where you just use simple relative locations and say, hey, uh, click on something on the right of unique ID. Or you can use uh, a context of a table, a specific table cell, and specify a row containing this ID and call to narrow down where exactly it, uh, it needs to be clicked and then say uh, this, I want this button. We will get into details why it is far more stable than any other way of doing it. Uh, but bear with me, let's first create those tests. Specifically, uh, let's start from relative location and let's click on the second button on the right of this unique ID. Okay, we have created our test suite here. Let's click Add Custom Test Case. And I click the second button on the right of this unique ID. Okay, let's add and run it. Uh, and then the second way to express it is to use a notion of table. Uh, it's not actual table um, in terms of HTML, but it's a table from a user's perspective. And in that we can say, hey, click on the second button. And when we define context, as a table with the row and column specified. So we'll do that. Let's copy it. Uh, there's an example already here, which you can copy. As you can see, our first example worked successfully. We clicked on this delete button. And let's add a second example and call it click the table and uh, what it says click on the second button within the context of a table uh, at the row containing SPK2 and column actions. So let's add and run here. And as you can see, uh, it basically found this table, found the intersection of a row containing unique ID and column actions, and clicked on the second button there. So why is this approach so much more stable? And you can try it, uh, try it or any other tool out there to see what's going to happen. 
let's see how you would do it for example in selenium or any other tool and let's see uh, how this specific uh, link would look like to click on it we'll let's get an xpath that would look something like this here of course instead of second row we will use uh, a row containing in a second column certain unique id um, and as you can see it relies on uh, table structure it uh, probably is a table here would have some kind of an id and it relies on rows and columns being there now uh, imagine that engineers have updated their code and updated the library which renders tables for that to emulate it we have created another page now the table looks like this basically as you can see it's almost identical to how it used to look before and if you inspect this element then you would notice that there is no table structure anymore there is just uh, divs all over the place and if you were to copy xpath for this option of version of the table it will look something like this so as you can see uh, the table structure changed dramatically that means that if you were to rely on uh, table locations originally uh, uh, table structure originally it will all fail because there is no table structure anymore moreover as you can see here there is no structure here at all it's all just a set of divs that from end user's perspective look like a table but do not have html structure which is a table so there is no indication of rows, columns, and so on and so forth. And therefore, not only this will fail, it will be exceptionally hard uh, to actually build something reliable uh, using this kind of uh, unreliable structure, especially if you do not control how the library or third party uh, specifically renders the table. However, let's get this URL and run the same tests which we have created with test trigger and see what's going to happen. And paste this URL. It's just a table three now. And we'll click rerun. And we'll go back to test cases. Uh, and we will uh, expand this and see how it will work okay first of all relative location is of course identical it is exactly the same uh, i have found the id and clicked on the second button on the right of it and as you can see uh, table uh, verbiage here adapted perfectly fine from a way as this table was rendered uh, with HTML table structure to the way it is rendered to the structure because from end user's perspective there is no difference it literally looks exactly the same and that is the easiest way and the most stable way to build your test automation to test your tables. Thank you very much.